Hello, Life Vantage. This is Darren Jensen coming to you uh, live from our media studios here in Salt Lake City, Utah. We are, uh, uh, we're on our doctor's series with Dr. Gene Tynes today, and uh, we're glad that you're joining us and um, for our uh, broadcast today. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, as I mentioned, today's our, our doctor series. And as part of this, we always give away some product. Today, I'll be giving away some of the ProTandem NRF2. So if you'd like to be part of it and uh, be eligible to, to win a, a bottle or so, uh, just put your name, your city, and your state in the, in the comments section, and we'll get you uh, in the drawing for it. And you can do that. Uh, it doesn't have to be on this live show. It can be afterwards because uh, we'll wait a few days before we do the drawing. So again, put your name, your city, and your state. So today we have Dr. Gene Tynes with us. And let me read you a little bit about uh, his background. Uh, Dr. Tynes was born and raised in Great Falls, Montana. You know, it's interesting. I was speaking with Dr. Tynes and, and we were just chatting about the weather because he's in Arizona right now and it's a beautiful location. But he's, he's from uh, Montana and he said that they've already had two feet of snow. And uh, that's just incredibly cold, for sure. Anyway, he attended uh, Montana State University and graduated with a degree in business and economics. He later attended dental school at the University of Washington. Dr. Tynes is an avid outdoorsman and has always had a passion for health and wellness. He chose dentistry because of the profession's focused on, focus on preventative care. He is a literature researcher, not a primary researcher, and has spent countless hours researching preventative medicine as well as preventative dentistry. And with that, I'd like to uh, welcome Dr. Gene Tynes to our program today. Dr. Tynes, welcome to the show today. Let's hope he's with the show today. Let's see. Can you see oh, me? Yep, I can see you now. Are you there with us? Yes, I'm here. You had me a little nervous. I thought, wow, I, I went through all that lead up and, and so, we just lost him. Looks like you changed now, locations. And my uh, cell phone said it's too hot to use. Well, you are in Arizona, and now yeah. it's a little dark. All I see is a silhouette. You look like a master criminal. Uh, well, maybe I mind. Let me find another place here because it won't let me go outside. It gets too hot. Okay. Well, Hang on. well, yeah, now it just turned good, but maybe just flip around the other direction, just as long as there's not a bunch of light behind you. That's even better. Does that work? All right. Now we can see really good because <laughs> before it was just a dark outline of you. Hey, but uh, Dr. Tynes, welcome. We're glad to have you uh, on on our broadcast today and share with us your, your wisdom and knowledge. Thank you. Okay. It's an honor to be here. I know some of the people you've had previously, and uh, they're all great folks. Well, good. Well, um, as part of this, uh, you know, I've read some of your background. Can you tell us can you just kind of talk to me about how you came into to became acquainted with Life Vantage? What encouraged you to 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 join the company, and and what keeps you as part of it? Well, so Darren, I've always uh, been into wellness. That's always been um, one of my fascinations. It's always been something that I've felt really strongly about. Something that I've done a lot of uh, time researching. That's one of the main reasons I went into dentistry. Uh, because we try to focus on prevention and wellness. Uh, and so uh, there, after doing dentistry for over 20 years, there's a, there's a lot of people that were in my practice that were doing everything I asked them to do. Uh, and they still were ended up losing teeth from, from this thing called periodontal disease and uh, where the, the bone and the, and the gums are just not healthy and they're infected and eventually some people, there's this uh, subset of people that have what's called refractory periodontal disease where it doesn't respond to, to the normal treatments, especially the things that we've, that we've been doing for the last 25 years and the things that I was taught to do in school. And so that always really bothered me. And, and also uh, my wife Kelly had medically managed weight loss centers for quite a few years. And we kind of saw the same thing, it's, you know, people with 
with uh, health issues have lots of different things going on and they seem to continue to go downhill most of the time. Now, losing weight helped them, but um, so we we're both kind of in the wellness industry and uh, I was looking at oxidative stress back then, seven years ago, uh, actually before that, probably eight years ago, as the, you know, the links between oxidative stress and periodontal disease. And so when I started looking at that and I saw that, and the, the next logical question is, well, what can we do to help lower the average person's levels of oxidative stress? With about the same time, some people had talked to Kelly uh, in her weight loss center uh, out of Florida uh, about some things that they were having great success with helping people with wellness. And so they're like, you want to hear more about it? And so she brought it to me because she wanted me to look at it because she knows that I'm the, the research nerd. And I started looking at it and it's like, oh, this is the same thing that, that I was looking at. And so we learned more about it. We actually got on the phone with some people, started talking about it. Um, that's when I first, first found out about Protandum back then. That's the only, you know, Protandum Nerf 2 was the only thing we had. And so uh, I brought it into my practice. I knew that it was not going to cure people's disease. I knew that. And, and that's what I was after. I was after any little things that I could use to help people become well. And, and the thing that we have to all understand is, is any disease is multifactorial. It's not just one thing. People with periodontal disease have lots of other things going on. And so that's how we became first introduced to it. I brought it into the practice. I tried it on some of these people <clears throat> that I wasn't, you know, that had this refractory periodontal disease. And, and I, like I say, I wasn't expecting to cure them, but I was hoping to maybe see some things that we could start working on to, to lead them on a path to wellness. So it was, I, I think it was probably divine intervention that brought us to the same place at the same time. Okay. Well, wonderful. Thank you for uh, kind of leading this up to to where we are today. Now, as I read through your your uh, your bio to everyone, it said that you were a uh, a literature researcher. So you're combing through all the literature and all the research that's being done, based off of what you're seeing. Uh, what do you see is the future for healthcare in the U.S.? So, Darren, I'm really uh, passionate about this and. So the, the best way I can describe it is, you know, we talk about fixing our healthcare system in the United States. Well, if, if you really think about it, we don't have a healthcare system. We have a disease care system. We have a disease model. And that's great. I'm not, please don't think I'm throwing anybody under the bus. We need the amazing doctors we have. We need the amazing technology that we have. But I think our focus needs to start becoming more about wellness and wellness care or truly health care versus disease care. And so the, the, the problem that, that all of us run into when we start talking about this, whether we're medical professionals or whether we're lay people on the street, when we start talking about wellness to medical Sorry. Oh yeah, Are you, yeah. Are you there? <laughs> yes, I got, I got, a, I got a call. So sorry. <laughs> part of, the, part of the problem is, is there's no way to monetize wellness for the most part in the United States. And and there again, it's it's just a problem with the system. There's good people out there trying to do that. But if I bring somebody into my practice and I talk to them for an hour about wellness, about things that we can do to help them with their periodontal disease. And, and all the other things that are going on with their caries, their, their rate of decay, uh, with heart attack, stroke uh, prevention issues. When I start talking to them about that, that's all on me. There's no way to monetize that. That's my time. And when, when, uh, when healthcare professionals are pushed like they are to get the job done and they're, they're pushed by managed care and PPOs and those sorts of things to get people through there. And, you know, if they're sick, give them a pill and get them out of there. They're, again, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. It's just that system has got to change. And so I truly believe, and it, it may happen in my lifetime, it may not, but I, I truly believe that we need to 
as, as a grassroots campaign and light Vantage, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm all in with you guys because I feel like we have a cadre of people that we can get this done. And it's what's got to happen there and is we have to start having the people that are sick start going to their physicians or whoever they're seeing and saying, hey, you know what? I'm just tired of taking all these meds. Now I'm on five different meds and I'm sick all the time. And now I've got all these side effects. I mean, just listen to the commercials and, and to the side effects. It's crazy. So that's the only way that this is going to get any traction is if the people start saying, I'm sick of getting things cut out. I'm sick of taking more medications. What can I do to make myself better? And when people start going to their physicians and their healthcare providers and start saying, I'm tired of that. What can I do to make myself better? Then people will start to listen. Then the insurance companies will start to reimburse for that. But until that happens, it's up to us. It's up to us. It's up to people like us that are on the cutting edge of wellness. They're on the cutting edge of biohacking. Uh, it's going to have to come from people like us. And it's not going to be easy. You know, it's, it's not going to be easy, but it's a fight worth fighting. And so that's where I see medical care going in, in the United States. And it's only going to come through people like us. It's not going to happen any other way. And I'm afraid to say it, but if, if it's not, if you're not able to monetize it, it's not going to happen. And the big pharma is absolutely against us. And, and I actually have uh, uh, friends that have clinics that if you're a patient of theirs, they'll guarantee that you'll never suffer from a heart attack or a stroke. If you follow their, their protocols wildly different than anything else out there. Yet, when they bring people in, physicians in to train them on their protocol, and these physicians go back to the hospitals and start implementing their protocol, all of a sudden, the hospital administrators are saying, hey, we're not generating the revenue that we need to. The cath lab's not full. We're not doing the number of surgeries. What's going on here? And they're finding out that people are talking to their patients about wellness. And there again, I'm not saying that anybody's a bad hombre doing that. I'm just saying that's the reality. And so um, we need to start educating people about wellness and there's no better company. I mean, it just used to be, it used to be Protanum Nerf too, but all the other things we have now with, with the ProBio, I mean, talk about an opportunity to help people with wellness. It, you've heard about the gut brain connection, right? You've heard about people having a gut feeling. Well, the gut and the brain are totally connected. When you take probiotics, it's not just about probiotics and, and digestive health. It's about overall health. So we have to be leaders in that field, which we are, and we've got to be the ones to get that message out to people. So I'm mm -hmm. excited about the future, but it's, it's going to be a hell of a battle. And I think Life Vantage is up for it. Well, uh, thank you for explaining that. You know, a couple of things where you were saying that now we have multiple products. And I think that this stacking approach of, of having systems, it, uh, I, I wish that there was one magical thing that you could do to correct everything, but there's not. And so uh, you'll see a lot of the company philosophy moving towards a stacking or a grouping of our products to give maximum benefit. And then I also like what you're saying uh, from the healthcare standpoint, because I notice it myself. And I believe that this is part of a larger trend called um, the rise of the health activated individual. And the health activated individual is one that is, is highly educated on their own health, that studies things, and is looking to improve overall health and look at the root causes of it not just tr treat all the symptoms because uh, what you were saying before of when you go into the doctors, it's going to take people that are tired of just getting a pill and being sent off yeah. to really start making a change. And for any of the physicians out there, uh, I love, uh, I, I love your dedication and what you're doing, but a huge business opportunity because I'm looking for physicians like this that are more holistic that, that will sit down with you and begin looking at the root cause, not just give a pill, but actually improve health, you know, and, and create strategies to do that. Yeah. What we're talking about here, Darren is, is, and, and we've got to, as a, as a general public, we've got to change our philosophy a little bit about wellness. What we're talking about is, is making cells better and making cells better takes time. 
And so you make one cell better when it copies itself, it's going to be better. It's going to be a little bit better every time versus being a little bit worse every time it copies itself. So when you start talking about it at the cellular level and making cells better, whether it's neurons, whether it's muscle cells, whatever, talk about making cells better, it takes time. But the people need to realize you don't get, you don't become diabetic overnight. You don't, uh, you don't become a person with atherosclerosis overnight. Those things, those deteriorations in your health take time. And so to reverse those things, or at least to make those things slow down, it takes time. And so we've got to get our head around that. As a general public, we're so used to, we've got a headache. And so we take something and it, yes, it gets rid of the headache. And thank God, because there's so many, it's, it's terrible to suffer from a headache. But rather, we need to start asking the question, why am I getting headaches? And that takes time to heal that. It's just like working out. I've worked out every day for the last 45 years. Do it. If I skipped working out for the next year, would I notice a lot of difference? Probably not a whole bunch. But in the next years after that, I would go downhill pretty quickly. And I don't work out so I can be better that very next day. I work out so, because it stacks the odds in my favor, right? I could go get run over by a train tonight. And, and, and those things can happen. But God forbid. But we have to start thinking about things to make ourselves a little bit better every day. We, you, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And well, so that comes from us, from our philosophy on, on, on getting better quickly. Well, and thank you. Let's, let's talk about, uh, I mean, since you're the dental area, is one of your main areas of focus, how is, is dental health related to overall health? Yeah, so uh, I used to give that a lot of thought, and, and in the last few years, I've just kind of started laughing at that, because how do you separate it? You know, uh, it's like saying, well, is your foot health related to your overall health? It, it, of course it is. Everything is connected. We've already talked about the gut brain access. Uh, I can assure you that nobody comes into my practice with periodontal disease that is healthy across the board otherwise. It's, it's all connected. There's actually a group that, uh, that I'm a founding member in. It's called the American Academy of Oral Systemic Health. And so as part of that grassroots thing I was talking to you about, what we're trying to do, this group of people, is, is start to get physicians and dentists and other healthcare professionals talking amongst each other about things that we can do to help the individual, a more holistic approach. So um, there's all kinds of research showing links between the two. In fact, uh, some good friends of mine, I've got a couple studies right here. I'll just read the titles of them. Uh, good friends of mine just did a meta-analysis. So if you're not familiar with that, what, what you can do instead of going out and doing the, the individual research yourself, you can go back and look at the research and then you can come to conclusions based upon, upon what a group of studies has said. And that analysis, it was done in, uh, it was published in April of 2017, high risk periodontal pathogens, bugs, to the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. So it, we used to think uh, 10 years ago, we could see as practitioners, we could see there's a connection between periodontal health and between people that have heart attacks and strokes. And we knew that that connection was there, but we didn't really know that those bugs that were present in the mouth could actually cause heart disease and strokes and atherosclerosis. We didn't know that. With this groundbreaking meta-analysis, it shows that it's actually causal, that those bugs, if you uh, look at the plaques that are in somebody's arteries that have a heart attack or a stroke, if you take them out, look at them under a microscope, those bugs are only present in the oral cavity. They're not present anywhere else. And so if we don't do something to, to keep the overall individual healthy, which includes the, the mouth, think about it this way too, Darren, just, it's crazy to me, but if you went around with 15 slivers or pieces of glass, shards of glass in your hand, and they got infected, and you had to sit there and look at it, and it started to bleed when you touched it, and you just kind of blew it off, like no big deal. But yet people are going around with that kind of stuff in their mouth where you touch the gums and they bleed and there's infection in the bone and infection in the gums. 
And for them to think that that's no big deal and it's not going to affect the overall health, it's, it's just crazy. So that's a that's a battle we're fighting on a different front in the dental community. But thank God. So that's, we're... So that's kind of it. Let me just repeat back kind of really synopsis what you said, just to make sure I'm clear, because I think this is a, an incredible point. You're saying that there is an actual causal relationship as far as science has been able to determine between the bacteria in your gum area potentially being related or causal to heart disease and strokes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. There's, there's, and we don't need to get into all of that, but there's a high out of things that need to happen, but it, it, it affects uh, inflammation. It affects the, uh, the permeability uh, of the, of the, uh, of the arteries themselves. And when that whole cascade of events starts to happen, then things start to go downhill. So it's wow. ab- absolutely causal. It's not just related. It's absolutely causal. So I actually have things that I can do in my practice. Um, I can do oral DNA tests, so I can do a salivary test. It'll come back to me. It'll tell me exactly. Uh, there's, there's seven, uh, different pathogens, bugs that have been, been, uh, identified as high risk pathogens to lead you to uh, uh, atherosclerosis. So I can get this report back and there's a certain threshold because you need some bacteria. I'm not saying they're all bad, and, but you need a balance of those. And so I can get a report back and it'll show me which bacteria are over threshold. And then we can actually um, uh, target specific bugs with specific antibiotics instead of just throwing a penicillin or amoxicillin at it which is a broad spectrum kills lots of bugs but nothing specifically we can actually go identify which high-risk pathogens are in there take steps to wipe them out get them back into balance below threshold and we can actually lower their risk of the propensity to develop heart attacks and strokes that along with other tests there's plaque 2 scores there's some called f2 isoprostane there's all kinds of things that that the that, that a lot of insurance companies don't cover, and so a lot of doctors aren't ordering these those tests. Well, and with this, since you know you're sharing with us some of the just the breakthroughs in science. This isn't related to the company anyway, but you're you're saying what you're seeing as the trends, the research. I'll just uh, remind everyone on on the call here that uh, any of the statements that have been made have not been evaluated by the by the FDA. And these products or any products we mentioned are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Thought I'd better throw that one out. Uh, but let, let, let's shift gears a little bit and move from, uh, from just specific of overall dental health. Because I didn't personally, I didn't realize it was so broad ranging and, and had such a big effect on the overall body. But um, why don't you talk to us about maybe the role of Nerf 2? and how that might help out the dental area of gums or, or uh, you know, what have you seen with, with Nerf 2 and the mouth? Yeah, so uh, we know that Nerf 2 helps with oxidative stress. We know that it helps with fibrosis. We know that it helps with inflammation. All of those things are associated with periodontal disease as well. And there again, the, the research community is starting to pick up on some of that. So I just, I got to paper just the other day. This was published in um, uh, 2017, August, so just a couple of months ago. Um, it's titled, The Role of Nerf 2 in the Regulation of Periodontal Health and Disease. I don't know what else you have to do to get the point across that maybe there's something going on here. There's uh, uh, this one, The Role of Nerf 2 in Cardiovascular Function and Disease in, in Oxidative Medicine and Cellular Longevity. That was uh, 2017 as well. So the 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 bottom line is we you know we don't make connections between what we have as a company and and treating disease, but we know that the literature shows um, that Nerf two is directly related to a lot of these things. So if there's ways to uh, to help that Nerf two pathway along in the proper ways, and we bundle that with overall wellness with getting enough sleep, with stress management, with uh, proper nutrition, with all of those things. It's not just a one-stop shop, but to me, taking care of Nerf 2 is such a simple thing. It, it's, you know, it, it, it can be uh, 
as we know as a company, there, there's lots of things out there that can help with NERF too. We just happen to have one that's really good at that. But there, you know, we can we can absolutely look at the research about how NERF two is linked to a lot of different processes in the body that are not good for you. And so any ways that we can do to minimize that, um, we, do, we have to do it. It's our obligation as healthcare professionals and, and as uh, the general public. So the, the research is there. People just can go look at it there. If you go to PubMed and you look at uh, periodontal disease uh, and NERF2, there's 14 studies that talk about it. Um, there's a couple studies that, uh, uh, and papers that look at um, uh, just if you do, if you do um, oxidative stress on PubMed, you look at that, there's some dental articles on that. So the, the research is there, the cardiovascular things with NERF2 is there. It's all connected. And to, like I say, to, to think that it's not is, is crazy. And there, there's no way it can't not be connected. This body we have is amazing. But some of the things we do in our modern life are not good for us. We have to help it get back to, to, to balance, to homeostasis. And that's all we're talking about here as a company. We've got things to help people get back into balance. We're not curing or treating or preventing anything necessarily. The, the problem is we've just let things get out of balance and we've got to have things to help us get back into balance. And as far as doing things to upregulate nerve two, that's probably the simplest things you can do. Um, uh, it's, it doesn't cost much money. It's, uh, it's easy to do every day. Uh, to me, it's just like working out. It's, it's something you do to help your body with wellness day on a daily basis. And you're not gonna notice it tomorrow if you do something today, but you're hopefully gonna notice it a year, five, 10 years down the road. That's what it's all about. All right. Well, let me uh, shift gears again and because uh, our time is just about out. And you talked about balancing the body, getting to homeostasis. But let me apply the same balancing concept. Um, you and your wife, Kelly, are, are, are pro sevens with this, but you still both work full time. Um, how do you do that? I mean, how do you balance? How do you balance out your overall, uh, I mean, between the business and, and your work and all your other, I mean, it sounds like you're on a number of, with a number of organizations and doing a wide variety of things. How do you manage it all? You know, Darren, we're very busy, but we're very blessed at the same time. We, we simply think of ourselves as ambassadors of wellness. And if you're, if you go at it from that approach that you're doing everything you can to disseminate the, this message to as many people as you can, at that point, it no longer becomes work. It becomes um, um, something that you just need to do, a calling, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, we've always approached it that way. We're not product salespeople. Um, we're, we're simply educators. And we, we truly care about people because we, we understand that if you just go out and help other people, um, you don't have to worry about yourself. Yourself gets taken care of. So you have to do things for the right reasons. And, and it's, uh, you know, the bottom line is we're, we feel very blessed that people care enough to listen to us that, uh, that we might make a small dent uh, in the universe, as Big job says. So mm -hmm. why don't you make a ding in the universe, I believe. Is there, you, there you go. So it's, it's, not, it's not just about being busy. It's about um, uh, doing the right thing and helping as many people as we can. So, well, well, thank you. And, and Dr. Tynes, thank you for uh, taking the time with us today. I know you're out traveling. And so it's always a pleasure. I know that you were here in the office a, a few weeks ago and we've had, uh, you know, we had a, a great conversation about, uh, you know, some of the things that you're doing as well as, as dental health. And that's where, you know, my mind just started to open to some of the possibilities that are out there from a product standpoint that we may want to look at and target as a company. So thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. You're very welcome. And I just want to give a shout out to you and Justin and Natalie and the whole team. Uh, I, I was thinking the other day, I, you know, like say I've been with the company for seven years and, and uh, there's some amazing people, but I kind of felt like, um, kind of like the, uh, the, the GPS in the car, you know, we're continually recalculating, you know, we're, <laughs> going this direction and that direction. And I just really feel 
in the last couple of years with uh, your guidance and your team that uh, you know, things to clean up that we're on the right track that I don't think we have much recalculating to do. I think uh, we're going to go straight up from here and, and that's not an easy thing to do. And I truly appreciate you and, and everyone on your team as well as the other doctors and life bandage that, uh, that are so amazing. We've got some amazing people in this company that I, that I love to call my friends and I'm really appreciative of. So thank you, Darren, for, for your guidance. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. And again, remember we're giving away uh, pro tandem uh, nerf two. So in the comment section, make sure you put down your name, your city your state, and we'll get you into the drawing for it. Also tomorrow is our final interview for the weekend. It's our leader. Uh, it's our leader series. And we're going to have uh, pro nine Maria Williams on with us. So join us tomorrow about this same time. I'm actually going to be out filming uh, some of our new uh, company videos tomorrow that you'll be seeing it at our at our event in Orlando. So if you if you haven't signed up for Orlando, make sure you do because we're we're bringing out a ton of new material. Like I said, tomorrow I'm going to be out filming it. So I I'll come back into the office, uh, do the. Uh, do the presentation and then head back out and continue the filming. So it's an exciting day. And I'm sure that uh, Maria Williams will be just an incredible guest. Awesome. And again, Dr. Tynes, thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining us. We'll see you later. Thank Bye. You.